Hello, I'm Andy Ray, an application engineer with Acurex. Today, I will walk you through the installation procedure of Acurex controls, model XKC. Before beginning work on any equipment, it is important to adhere to safety standards. Be sure all utilized breakers are off and to wear the appropriate personal protection equipment, or PPE. The product will arrive either shipped loose in a carton, within a remote cabinet on a pallet, or within a hood-mounted cabinet on a pallet. First, thoroughly check to ensure all items are accounted for. Anything missing or damaged should be noted on the bill of lading. If any damage is observed or items are missing, please contact your Acurex representative immediately with the serial number on hand. The serial number is located on the wiring diagrams on the interior of the control enclosure door. It is highly recommended to have a copy of the Installation and Operations Manual, or IOM, on hand before arriving on site. The IOM contains important information regarding the installation, maintenance, and troubleshooting. A copy of this document ships in the product packaging and is also available at Acurex.com. Just type kitchen controls in the search box. Also, remember to follow any applicable local codes during installation. If the controls aren't mounted in a hood cabinet, the first part of the installation is to mount the control enclosure or cabinet. Locate an area with enough space to mount and fasten it to the wall. Ensure there is at least 36 inches of clearance in front of the panel. Your control package will always contain a main control enclosure, a touchscreen interface, and one or more hood temperature sensors. Other accessories, like room sensors, may also be included. To access, simply use a flathead screwdriver to turn and unlock the door. The field wiring diagram will be located on the inside of the door. Refer to this diagram for all necessary connections as they are drawn specifically for your system. An additional loose field diagram and panel diagram are in the plastic sleeve inside of the control enclosure. Be sure to return the loose diagrams to the plastic sleeve when done, as they will be important for any troubleshooting down the road. Let's take a look at a sample field wiring diagram. This diagram breaks up the connections into two groups, power wiring high voltage on the left side of the diagram and control wiring low voltage on the right side of the diagram. All connections and devices are labeled. Any connections drawn with solid lines are already complete from the factory, while any connections drawn with dashed lines are to be made in the field. Before we begin any wiring, let's install the touchscreen interface. This may already be factory installed on a cabinet or hood face, but if shipped loose, mount the touchscreen junction box to an accessible spot. Then plug one end of the provided Cat5e cable to the port in the back of the touchscreen and press fit the touchscreen into the mounted junction box. Finish by plugging the other end of the provided Cat5e cable into port J15 on the main board. We'll start with the power wiring. These connections need to be done by an electrician. Remember to ensure all breakers are off until wiring is completed. Begin by bringing the main power to the control enclosure, running 120 volts to terminal H1, neutral to N1, and ground to GND. Next, run outgoing power to the lights, connecting terminal LTS-H, which is 120 volt, and LTS-N, which is neutral, to the light junction box at the top of the hood, and ground to GND. Multiple hoods can be wired together as long as the load doesn't exceed 1200 watts. A dry fire contact is provided if accessories, including alarms or dampers, need to operate alongside the fire system. For these accessories, connect the common wire to C1 on the panel, the normally open wire to N01, and the normally closed wire to NC1. For example, if a shunt trip breaker, provided by others, is being used to disconnect appliance power in case of a fire, wire 120 VAC to terminal C1 and from N01 and neutral to the shunt trip breaker coil. During a fire scenario, N01 becomes energized, tripping the shunt and disconnecting any appliance power. Next, we'll cover the power wiring to fans. These will vary based on your specific fan packages, but we'll review the most common configurations. Again, remember to follow all applicable codes, including wire size, when installing and wiring power to these panels. We'll first look at a single phase exhaust or supply fan operated with a motor starter. Bring the appropriate voltage to the motor starter. Voltage required is dependent on your motor. The motor starter is typically located in the control enclosure or cabinet. 
land the line power lead to terminal L1 on top of the contactor, land the neutral wire to terminal L2 on top of the contactor. Then, from the bottom of the overload, or contactor if no overload was provided, connect terminals T1 and T3 to the disconnect at the fan. Three-phase exhaust, or supply fans with motor starters, are very similar. Bring the appropriate voltage to the main board, this time landing the three line power leads to terminals L1, L2, and L3 on the top of the contactor. Then, from the bottom of the overload, or contactor if no overload was provided, connect terminals T1, T2, and T3 to the disconnect at the fan. For both fan types, the fan's grounding can also be connected back to the GND terminal in the control enclosure. For an exhaust or supply fan controlled with a VFD instead of a starter, connect the appropriate voltage to the VFD, which is typically mounted in the control enclosure or main cabinet. Land the three line power leads on terminals L1, L2, and L3 on the bottom left of the VFD. Connect the three motor leads to terminals T1, T2, and T3 on the bottom right of the VFD. Another common exhaust fan type is a Greenheck Very Green Motor Equipped Fan. When working with these motor types, all power wiring is directly connected from the building breaker panel to the fan disconnect instead of wiring any power through the control enclosure. Next, we'll move to the control wiring. This wiring is to be done by a controls contractor or electrician, typically using 18 to 22 gauge wire and remembering to follow all applicable codes and industry standards. We're going to be starting with fan control wiring. The connections we will cover may vary based on your specific fan package. Refer to the wiring diagram located on the inside of the control enclosure door to verify your connections. While fans equipped with motor starters and VFDs typically don't require any additional control wiring, Greenheck Very Green Motor Equipped fans require a simple two-wire connection. For Very Green Exhaust fans, there will be terminals labeled E for exhaust with up to eight terminals. These terminals contain an S plus and S minus connection. There may be multiple pairs of terminals following this naming schematic depending on the number of fans provided. Wire each pair of terminals to the corresponding Very Green motor, connecting the S plus terminal to the red wire on the Very Green motor and the S minus terminal to the white wire on the Very Green motor. Supply fans, commonly known as makeup air units, requiring a run command will need either a two wire or four wire connection. For non-variable volume units, Wire each pair of terminals to the R and G terminals on the corresponding makeup air unit, connecting the S number dash R terminal in the control enclosure to the R terminal on the makeup air, and the S number dash G terminal in the control enclosure to the G terminal on the makeup air. Now, for supply units equipped with variable volume speed control, there will be two additional terminals. Connect terminal S number dash 46 in the control enclosure to terminal 46 on the makeup air, and terminal S number dash 47 in the control enclosure to terminal 47 on the makeup air. Now let's move to the far right of the field wiring diagram, which contains the remaining control wiring mostly based around sensors and switches. We'll start with the fire system control switch. This is the communication between the hood's fire suppression system and the control package. During this wiring process, the panel will temporarily go into a dry fire alarm. This means any devices connected to the dry fire contacts will activate, but the hood fire suppression system will not discharge. We first want to ensure the fire suppression system is mounted and accessible. Then locate a fire system microswitch, typically located near the fire system release mechanism. Back at the main board, remove the factory wire jumper between terminals FS-C and FS-NC. Wire from FS-C on the main panel to the common on the fire system microswitch. Then wire from FS-NC on the main panel to the normally closed on the fire system microswitch. For example, if we're installing an Ansel fire suppression system, wire FS-C to the red common wire on the microswitch and FS-NC to the brown normally closed wire on the microswitch. 
When completed, the dry fire alarm will clear. Now we can tie the hood temperature sensors into the control package. Temperature sensors are used to monitor the overall cooking load and are typically factory installed in the kitchen hood. If not already installed, refer to the IOM for field mounting instructions. Each hood's temperature sensor needs to be wired to the main board. Connect either of the two wires on the temperature sensor to terminals TS dash number A and the other to TS dash number B. The number of TS terminal pairs will correspond to the number of hoods configured with the control package. Each hood will require a temperature sensor to be wired back to the main panel. Temperature sensors must be wired back individually and cannot be run in series to work properly. Refer to the wiring diagram to view which hood's sensor is associated to each terminal pair. Lastly, if provided, surface mount the room sensor to the wall with the provided screws. Use two strand 18 gauge wire to make a connection from the terminals on the rear of the room sensor to the main board, landing either of the wires on terminals RSA and RSB. You have now successfully completed the installation of an Acurex kitchen control package. For more information about Acurex controls, including the IOM and other videos, visit Acurex.com. You can also contact our technical support team at 1-800-371-6858. Thank you for choosing Acurex.